Hello, I'm Santi from Impronic USA. In this tutorial, we will learn how to simulate faults, analyze them, and clear them, both with and without a vehicle. Let's get started. First, we connect the upper board of the trainer. Since this vehicle has no faults present, we will generate one manually. We connect the trainer, then use the splitter to the OBD2 port. One end goes to the scanner tool, and the other end connects directly to the trainer using the OBD2 cable. If you want to buy, here is the purchase link. Next, we open the trainer's application and select the upper board. In this instance, is COM6. We open the port, connect to OBD2 here, set the speed to 500 kilobits per second, which corresponds to OBD2 protocol, and then press start. The LED7 will start blinking rapidly. To visualize the fault codes, we must follow our diagnostic mode table. Mode 03 shows the diagnostic trouble codes, or DTCs. Likewise, mode 07 displays the DTCs detected during the last driving cycle, or the current one, and mode 0A shows the permanent or clear DTCs. So, based on that, we can now send the code. The first data is 01, means the valid bits to be sent, then 03 read active DTCs, we send it, and as we see, the vehicle responds with an active DTC. Here we have the ID, then byte 1, which corresponds to the valid next bytes, 43, meaning a positive response to mode 03. Then, 01 indicates it is a P-type DTC, and 0102 represents the actual fault code of the DTC. Now, let's look for the DTCs from the last driving cycle. For that, we use mode 07, so we send mode 07. Then we wait for the response. As we can see, the response gives us six valid bytes. 47 indicates a positive reply to mode 07. 02 means there are two active DTCs in this case. The first one is 0102, and the second can be interpreted as 0113. So, in this situation, we have two DTCs, P0102 and P0113. We can also check the permanent DTCs. To do this, we use mode 0A. By pressing CAN-TX, we can see the permanent DTCs. In this case, the only permanent DTC stored is 0102. Here, we are able to interpret the different error codes that vehicles may report. Or, alternatively, we can simulate these fault conditions directly from the desktop. Now, we will clear the error codes. To do this, we go back to the diagnostic modes, and we can see that mode 04 is used to erase DTCs. So, we send the command 0104, which allows us to delete all of the vehicle's DTCs. Once the code is sent, we wait for a positive response. And as we can see, the reply confirms that all DTCs have been successfully erased. Now we are going to simulate faults on the desktop without a vehicle. On the splitter, we connect the chassis ground and the signal ground to pins 4 and 5. On pin 16, we connect the power supply. One end goes to the scanner, and the other end connects to the trainer. First, we open our application and select the port, in this case, COM6, then press the Open button. This corresponds to the upper board. For the lower board, we open another window, select the port, in this case, COM5, and press Open. Now, we choose the OBD2 protocol at a speed of 500 kilobits per second and press Start the LED will begin flashing rapidly. In the other window, we select the same options and press Start as well. Likewise, the LED starts flashing rapidly. 
we are now ready to send and receive information. So, how do we know when we should respond? We can run a quick test using the scanner that was connected by sending to OBD and checking which codes we receive. Here, we get 020100, which we must reply to in order to access the next menu. So, we go to respond with 7E8, which is the most common identifier for the engine. Our reply is 02 positive response 110000. We will transmit this at an interval of 100 milliseconds and then add it continuously. Next, we proceed to send these codes repeatedly and then we re-enter the scanner. As we can see, we have now successfully gained access to the system. Now, we will respond every 100 milliseconds with the first part, and then we will send a DTC 044301. It is the same error we had in the vehicle, 0102, which corresponds to the fault. We will transmit this every 50 milliseconds. We press start, and we can see the data being sent at that rate, simulating the fault. On this screen, we can see the information received when pressing read DTC on the scanner. In the same way, we can also view the data received when clearing the fault codes. The response is instantaneous, and the information is ready to be analyzed. Now, we are going to trigger faults using the physical switches. We open the trainer window, and then press the Go Training button. The LED will immediately turn off. To program a switch, we select the checkbox, and in the ID field, we enter 7E8. We copy the same fault code we were using before. I'll arrange the windows here for better visualization. We paste the fault code into the data field, press the Send button, and then confirm with Accept. Next, we go to our scanner and read the fault codes. As we can see, there are none. Now we activate our switch manually and read the codes again. This time, we see the fault 0102 that we just sent. Let's now program switch 2. We select the checkbox, enter the ID 7E8, copy the same fault code from above, but change the last digits from 02 to 03. Remember to mark the checkbox, press Send, and confirm with Accept. We activate switch 2 manually, read the DTCs, and now we get the fault P0103. We repeat the same process for switch 3. Keep in mind that only one switch can be programmed at a time. Here we change 02 to 04. Press Send and then Accept and we obtain exactly the same result. Thank you very much for watching this video, and remember to follow us for more tutorials.